Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Bo Snail, Justin Duso, Joseph Pizarro, Samson, Maris, Harry Blade, Mobile Mac 777, Neo the One, Lost Cat FE, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Dal West Watson, Mike, Muted, Dick Earth Skeptic, Chris Elman, NA Literalist, Maria Nealands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, Rob H, Nathan Thompson, The Real Gabster, Windrider, Liam Nedrick, Erwin Jenisons, Abraham Mohammed, Dave Rakea Gafford, Nyby, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, Fireball X, Felix Hung, Texas Mike, Edwin Johnson, Kirsten Smith, Alexander Main, David Wayne Foster, and Dank. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now raise the mic on whoever is in Discord so you can enjoy their conversation while I set up for today's live show. Oh, I'm not even logged into Discord. There we go. You know when it hits when it hits eight thirty five, I start panicking. Uh, I don't want to say this to you. I've had a bit of car trouble. <laughs> I had a bit of car miracle because I've been oh, back really? in the city working, but you know I still got the Mercedes. I'm waiting for the title on the other car. I have no heat in the car, and I I got to sleep in my car. I can't spend money in a hotel freezing the other night and then my heat just went on the other day it just started working again well that's the good thing just about a glitchy working. glitchy Instead electrical merkel come i said a little prayer like that the second night i was like i can't do it so i called my wife and she let her sister know that i gotta come there and stay tonight which they tell me to come all the time but i don't like doing that but i stood the night and then um yeah when I got up in the morning to go to work, it was on. Go figure. Yeah, I had a problem with the Lexus just not starting. It just kept on dying like it got a flat battery and it kept charging the battery and it just didn't seem to solve the problem. Um, however, when I before I started charging the, the battery, I figured out that all the terminals were loose. And it's because when I changed the battery, when I serviced it, when I first got it and bought the battery for it, hey, Tenth, you're making a right old racket. I am? Yeah. Or it's Neil. It's I'm... Neil, I think. Or it's Yeah, I'm not even e moving. <laughs> Either way. Um, yeah, the terminals have come loose because I'd snapped the top off, the thing that secures the battery so it doesn't rattle around while you're going over bumps. So over the course of 12 months, the connections had come loose. And then obviously they're just sparking and discharging the battery the whole time you're driving it. Um, but it took me a while to figure that out. So you think, okay, well, even though they're loose, they're still connected. Is it that that's caused the battery to die? Because it's a brand new battery. So then you do a, a charge on it and then it still doesn't work. And then you realise that really you should deep cycle the battery with a very slow trickle charge. Of course, you have to do all that research after faffing it around and breaking down in about five different locations, <laughs> which is a right ball ache. You know, you go and pick your kid up and then you come back to the car and it won't bloody start. And you're like, ah, oh, I've charged it. Terminals are tight. What else am I supposed to do? Um, but yeah, eventually I deep cycled the battery and now it seems to work fine started twice <laughs> so happy days i've been a bit pissed off and headachey over it over the last couple of days that's not honest. bad news that's good news it wasn't major it's not major it's just when you break down somewhere i the car won't start you then have to get into sorting out somebody to come and collect you securing the car that's got no power to operate the central locking that in itself takes 10 minutes you know it's just a ball ache Especially when the, all the locks are concealed. You've got to pop off bits of trim to get to the key locks. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. <laughs> anyway. Modern cars. Fun, fun, fun. It's my own fault. I broke the, like I say, I broke the little securing catch piece of plastic that a screw goes into to piece a thing over the top of it. And I snapped the little plastic retainer which is only about half a millimetre wide, tiny little thing. Now it's just rattling around, so I'll just have to keep an eye on it and keep tightening it. 
fascinating stuff here on Flat Earth Debate, hey? Always with the cars. Speaking of cars, did you watch the movie yet? I really want to get my three-channel amplifier back before I do. So, on the whole, I've got very little interest in movies, except for car-related ones. <laughs> so, one of the last races I watched, I can't remember what it was about. It was, again, it was about Ferrari. Um, can't remember what the name of the film was, but it was about specifically about Ferrari and a German race car driver that had a fiery crash and then went back into the racing. But that was one of the last movies I'd, I'd watched. Um before sending all the amps off. And I contacted my amp tech today to say, you know, what's the score? And like most amp techs, there aren't many about anymore because most people have got disposable gear. You know, it breaks and they throw it in the bin. Very few people have got sort of expensive stuff that they want to maintain. So my 20-year-old equipment, yeah, it's old, but it's far superior to anything you could buy in a, your average shop. So obviously I want to fix it, but to find someone to do that is very, very, very difficult. Because back in the 70s, everybody was hi-fi, you know, enthusiasts. It was like number two or three on the list of things that people wanted. I think it was three, house, car, hi-fi. Now, it's like number 100. So hardly anybody cares about it. So the only people you can find to repair this stuff are, are older, retired amp techs. And they're doing it for fun. So they're in no rush. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I remember the 70s. I remember all the different places you can go and they're working on even the vacuum tube type of uh, stereo equipments and there's, and stores where you can just go walk in and shelves full of parts to things that were 50 years old, <laughs> no longer. Absolutely. I mean, back in the year 1998, till about 2000 or 2001, I was working in a shop and one of the guys that was there was an ex-reviewer, ex-BT telephone engineer, and he was the guy that would make our cables and repair the amps, and he'd shown me on <clears throat> multiple occasions how to fix amps. Now, I'm colorblind, so that resulted in lots of things going bang <laughs> after I'd fixed them, so I kind of gave up, which is frustrating, because I'd love to be able to do it. It's something that's, you know, I feel if I could see colors, I could probably do it, Probably because I've never been able to up until now. Every time I fix something, it normally <laughs> it normally breaks shortly afterwards because I've done something wrong because I can't identify the colour of the wire correctly. Um, with help, I can get it done. But then what's the point in me doing it if I've got someone over my shoulder going, yeah, that is brown. There's probably an app for that. Uh, yeah, probably. We, we, call the, <laughs> we call that an assistant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's a um, something you could study on Skillshare. You know, you see all those YouTubers getting um, sponsored by Skillshare. And it's like, I'm sure there are dyed in the wood amp techs that have made a Skillshare. Whatever it is, I've never actually used it. But um, So yeah, I'm sure, when you say there's an app, I'm sure there is. But as I say, it's not very useful to someone colorblind. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to risk one of our amplifiers going bang, actually dying completely beyond repair because I've had a go at fixing it. Okay, with five minutes left, can I uh, bring up a question and see what we can get out of it? Sure. Uh, the crepuscular rays that are seen through the world from just about anybody at Funny angles, different angles, spreading out, by the way. Line that up with what heliocentrism says. The sun is so far away that light comes in at parallel lines. Now, in the real world, we don't see parallel sun rays. In the real world, we see crepuscular rays angling away from a center point. Now, when the sun is directly over a spot in navigation, they call that the GP, the ground position. That's the zenith of the sun over that particular spot at that hour, minute, second of the day. And that's how they navigate. So if you got the sun directly over a spot on Earth, at a, that's your 90 degree there, zenith. And all the other rays are spreading out. Then how can all the sun's rays be coming in parallel lines? And we never see parallel lines. Right on. 
see the exact same thing being explained with umbra and penumbra being impossible based on their description of how the eclipse works in their model when they show you a diagram with exactly the same thing, right? No longer do they use parallel lines when they're describing that little phenomenon. Is that the one where the shadow should be bigger but it gets smaller? Not that, it's just if you look at their diagram, they haven't got parallel lines to cause that. You obviously didn't catch QE's presentation on that. Uh, I, I, I'm overloaded. I'm pretty. <laughs> That's fair enough. I, I know, I know what umbra and penumbra is, but I'm seeing the visual in my mind of the sun, uh, say the moon, and then the earth, and then the moon's shadow should be bigger, but on Earth it's smaller. Right, but if they when they draw out the lines, create the shadow in their diagram side on, of course then you've got these lines that aren't parallel running to across the page. It's hard to describe without just showing you a drawing, but across the page to the surface of their planet. So it's not okay, parallel it anymore. I'll... You'd have to see a diagram so to make see... sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to type it and look at some uh, images. But uh, do you see the problem they have? Yeah. They have to have the sun's rays come in in parallel lines. But show me any time in nature, in the natural world, Sun's rays coming in parallel lines. You can't. No, perspective is real. That's short silence because you assumed I've started the show already. <laughs> no, I'm look. I'm looking at the pictures. <laughs> Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, how dare you, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Neil, Tenth Man, The Adam Meakin, Brian's Logic, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Good morning. Afternoon. Morning, guys. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Welcome. Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as Earth curvature? None on yeah. Monday and not on Friday and none in between those days. No, I can't find any. That any evidence? destroys their globe right there. I was just explaining to one of my fellow workers the whole black swan thing. He's not getting it. He said, I want to believe it, but I was taught everything I learned in school and I can't get past that. This is honest. <laughs> that's, that's raw honesty, though, right? At least he's given his actual reason. He's not lied to you. He's gone, yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I explained everything to him. He said, it sounds correct. Everything sounds right. But they just shot a rocket up the other day. I watched it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you saw an expensive uh, rocket show, that's all. 
yeah, a lot of people will just accept it because they've seen it on TV. If it's on TV, then it's real. Hey, Paul? Do you know how much it would cost to fake that? No. I, th- I don't think you could fake it. I think it would be more expensive to try and fake it than to do it for real. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to get Kramer. Kramer could fake it. Kramer? From Seinfeld? Yeah, from, um, you know, Seinfeld. Seinfeld. When he faked it. <laughs> okay. We'll get Kramer to fake it then. Any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? That would involve us seeing the... Uh observing the Coriolis effect from the ground, Jess. Yeah, that would be their claim. We have Coriolis deviation at 15 degrees an hour as Earth turns underneath. Hey, Shay. No. no. Shay, can you pop yourself on mute? Hello, Shay. Shay? Hello. You need to turn yourself down a bit or get back off your mic or turn your speakers down. You're causing a load of feedback. Mic you hear me? Mic discipline. Yes, we can hear you. Can you turn yourself down a bit so we don't hear ourselves feeding back through your speakers? I have turned myself down, That's haven't excellent. I? Well done. Thank you very much. Hey, Arwin. Hey, Arwin. Hi, Arwin. Hello. Hello. Hello, guys. Any Hello. evidence of the uh, distance to the sun? Oh, well, if you put it... If you pre-assume that we're on a globe of a particular size and there is another planet that's equal in that size at a particular distance that you've not verified. Um, uh, Shay, Shay, Sh- uh, hold on. Shay, are you insane or just stupid? Put yourself on mute. I'm not going to ask you again. You'll just get removed. Sorry, Brian. Yeah, um, if you presume you're on a, a spherical planet of a particular of a particular size, and then you presume that there is another planet equal in that size at a particular distance, then you can presume that the sun is ninety three million miles away. Don't you I don't know if you call pretend. that evidence. <laughs> Sorry. Don't you have to pretend that triangulation also works? Give you well, a yeah, yeah. confirmed triangulated position. If you brush over that as well, then you're fine, I think, Brian, all those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you ask if that would be classed as evidence? You, you clearly know the answer to this, Brian. Oh, that's not evidence, Nathan. Absolutely not. That's a lot of rubbish. But that's what, that's what, that's what they got. So. Any scientific evidence of gravity? Scientific evidence of a reification fallacy? <laughs> no. <laughs> but yes, it is a reification fallacy. Could that be scientifically proven that it's a reification fallacy? Can't validate that someone's reified mathematics. The reification thereof is not a phenomenon. Isn't it? Isn't reification a phenomenon? <sighs> Good morning, guys. Adam, maybe you can answer this because he might have a point here and I don't want to cut him off and poo-poo him if he's wrong, right? So (laughs) the the action of somebody, a person in nature, reifying mathematics, their their conceptions, could you call that phenomenon? Um, No, because the maths isn't naturally occurring, is it? So even if you're reifying it, it's not part of nature, it's a construct. Yeah, but it's... not the math. It's not the math. It's the reification of the math. The process no. of turning not actual things into actual things. Could you call that a phenomenon? <laughs> no, because it's still conceptualization. You're not is it really turning it into something, are you? <laughs> Look, sometimes Arwen's got well, good points that I, I miss. Act of reifying something be the proof that it's being reified. Why would you need to scientifically validate that? Yeah, you could just point it out. Because it's funny. Because it's funny. funny. They could scientifically (laughs) prove they're reifying it when they can't prove that it's scientifically valid. (laughs) I think you're clutching at straws here. So scientifically prove that they're reifying something. So No, 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 no. No, he's looking for the cause of reification in humans, I think. Yeah. 
that's what I'm saying. You'd need to look for a cause of reification to do it scientifically. What causes these people to reify? Maybe One it's cognitive belief. dissonance. Yeah, but I can't call fundamentalist religious zealotry an independent variable now, can I? But but instantly, you see, you're into the realms of psychology, which makes it right. non-science straight away. Exactly. It still hey guys, could be considered on. a phenomenon, though. <laughs> I, I, Owen's just going to... Owen's learnt the rinse and repeat method, <laughs> clearly. No, 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 I said colloquially. <laughs> I and think you're going to rephrase the same thing now, aren't you? Yes. I think this is a proper time for intellectual distancing. <laughs> Use his own genius against him. I like it. <laughs> yes. I don't think we're spinning. <laughs> yeah, but that's not a cause of Coriolis virus in your case. You just know we're not. No try, Alan. Nice try. No one's going to hospitalise you. You just want a nurse to look at you. I don't know you do. Yes, but she's got to be hot. Exactly. Right, moving on while we uh, get the uh, misogynist SJWs on our case. Right, any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Hey, Flatsoid. Not so far. Hey, no, that will be a definite no, and I don't think there ever will be. What would be their null hypothesis? Because that's really the only one they, uh, you know, what would, what would it be? Any evidence of the R value? Earth radius? Presupposition thereof? <laughs> radius? <laughs> nah. Radius, you think? That <laughs> gun. Well, what is this oh. radius you speak of? What is this? Third <laughs> <laughs> one. So, when should need the uh, Earth curve blocking the bottom of boats for that? What, physical geometric well, sphere edge horizon formerly known as Earth curve? Yeah, you would. We covered that, yeah. the first question. Well, you'd not have to not have um, a moving horizon, and you'd also have to not have refraction, and you'd also have, have to have a consistently curving Earth. So, no, no. Or, like you suggested, you could just assume all three. Yeah, that, well, that, that's the other option. <laughs> Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? We can have a presupposed molten iron core at a presupposed spherical Earth, but you can't have one. Right. At the presupposed spherical Earth, it could be possible if the presuppositions yeah. were true. I mean, it could well, be there's possible. evidence that there's, that there's uh, a on, option. Me... Let me just correct Darwin. Could be possible in the reification. It is possible in the reification, and it's very much what they claim is at the centre of their presupposed spherical Earth. So not just possible. Reified into existence is the point of the question, though, as opposed to whether or not they've got it in the model. They definitely have. Well, it's definitely in the model. Oh, you got it me there. Out, <laughs> it's definitely in the model, but it doesn't bet out in reality. There is evidence of a pre-assumption, right? Yeah, that's what Arwen just did. That's that's you <laughs> just it's Friday. They're they're here to wind me up, ladies and gentlemen. This is the point of this. That's why they're all here. <laughs> they know I'm knackered by, by the Friday. Are you, are you are you are you presupposing our motives now? Oh god, you here know, we go. Next thing you know that some some people get mad when we point out that these guys presuppose all this shit, but then there are a couple of them that have come out and just said it. Right? I mean <clears throat> Professor Phil or or just Phil, sorry. Um, he came out and blatantly said it. Of course, yeah, we presuppose a model. That's how we come up with the model. And then you get Rumpus, who I know back in the day said it, that we presuppose are. And of course, we have Mick West, who came out and said, oh, yeah, well, R is based on the presupposition of the standard model. Oh, okay. So then we're not wrong when we're saying you guys presuppose all this shit. So yeah, I don't understand why they... the rest of them don't catch up and say, hey, yeah, yeah, we all re presuppose this crap. I don't, I don't get that. Because they say well, everybody they knows think... it's a sphere. 
they think that presupposing is just knowing because they are assuming the earth must be a ball. <laughs> or to put it another way, they basically define what a begging the question fallacy is as a justification for begging the question. So uh, because I already know my outcome, I'm going to assume my outcome. And that's perfectly justifiable. Well, you realize to assume your outcome is to have circular reasoning applied to your logic. Well, yeah, but I already know. <laughs> so it goes on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get that, Seat of your pants. Remember that? Yeah, oh, guesswork. Man. Same thing. Leaps of logic. Trumpus holds no punches. He says we all know it's a sphere. No, we don't. The geometric horizon, according to him, only exists in the maths. So, no, we don't live I'm on a sphere. It's a reification. Him. I'm just quoting him. He thinks we're absurd. All of science knows that the Earth is a sphere. Yeah, we covered this. The study of science. <laughs> we covered this. There is no scientific evidence from any of their pseudoscience fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics. They're never going to provide you even with a, a hypothesis that's valid, let alone an experiment that's utilising that hypothesis to prove something they claim. That's never going to happen. All they are is pseudoscience priests. They're always talking about uh, peer review. They always, they, they, uh, at least once a day, uh, they come up with peer, peer review, right? And they latch on to peer review. Diamonds raining down on a planet or a star or something that's 100,000 light years away, it was peer reviewed and it was put through as correct. So that, that tells that's, the kind of, that's the kind of thing that's peer reviewed. Well, if if you're going to say peer, and I assume that's spelled P E P E E R, right? Two E's. Well, you can then spell you're... it P E A R if you like, because it's the same thing. That's pair. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but peer review. Well, who's the peer? Are they the same people who have the presupposition in their head as they peer review your presupposition yeah. in your yes. paper, or are yes, there someone definitely. on? That's correct. Or are they someone on this side of the <laughs> Yeah, they're a higher side? ranking uh, presupposition. Uh, well, it's, so, it's somebody sitting in the classroom across the hall. Just, just, because, <laughs> something's, peer just because something's peer reviewed doesn't make it scientific. But the well, bottom line is what I'm saying. the peer review is where it begins uh, in terms of the just so story, but we're living in a consensus reality. Those are the words you're, you're rooting for. In other words, if we all agree that the sky is a vacuum, then the sky is a vacuum. That's a consensus reality. So therefore, because the majority of the Western world already know they're on a sphere, therefore, the consensus reality dictates that we're on a sphere. Now, it makes no difference whether in actuality we are or aren't on a sphere because we live in a consensus reality. The consensus says and thinks they live on a sphere. And they've got peer-reviewed journals to back their thoughts and feelings about the matter when they reify a model. But that's yeah. not even logical. What? May I finish my peer review? <laughs> All right. So in high school, as Chocolate and I have a very similar story, the teacher taught this. And we, the peers of the teacher, maybe not by age, but in proximity, said, wait a minute. How could that be if water doesn't curve? Or how can that be if? And we reviewed what he said. And in my case, the it. teacher said, okay, listen. I just have to teach it. I don't even believe it. So where's the honesty of peer review when the people you're teaching it bring up good, logical counter questions? And your answer is, look, don't stop these questions. I have to teach this. I don't even believe it. Right. Teachers are not your peers. They're your teachers. Student teacher isn't the same as peer. Your peers would be the other students around you. Right, but what I'm saying is, why is peer-reviewed limited to teachers who all have the same presupposition? To be a most more honest scale, it should be reviewed by the most hostile witness, and you with the facts should win when you logically overcome all the objections. Well, it's contextualized within their system. So your idealistic, what it should or shouldn't be, is irrelevant because they're utilizing it to their own ends. Hitler was misunderstood. What's missing? This one, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. I missed that. That's... I missed that, Ryan. <laughs> Say it again. 
Oh. Somebody repeat what was just said. He know, said, he said, Hitler was misunderstood. All right. The Hitler fallacy. I didn't. When I said the payo review, I was correct uh, because you you may as well have a payo reviewing you for a start. But secondly, they all believe, they're all payo believers. They believe they live on a payo, you know, a payo shaped world. Uh, even Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> describes it as a payo. So they are all payer believers. So it's payer review would be more correct because they're not re- they're not they're not uh, critically reviewing anything. You know, it's whatever fits with their payer model. I think, I think um, they, me and says. I think this is something we covered on um, QEs, Nathan, isn't it? Is this um, dilution of of what peer review was purposed for initially, which is part of the systematic. Uh, evaluation and, and repetition of experimentation. That's what a peer review is supposed to do. You're supposed to go and replicate it, get the same results. What what it's kind of turned into, and mostly you see, is a, a mathematical appraisal. Is the maths was in the postulations correct? Is there any faults there? And well, very r- rarely are you going to get that. But no longer does it have the the significance for me. Uh, peer review used to, like I say, used to be a repetition and a confirmation of both experimentation and results uh, done by another independent person. Now, it's just a review of the paper to see if there's any logical errors. It's not part of the scientific method anymore. Are you sure? Are you sure that peer review is ever the basically the systematic experimentation stage in the scientific method? Are you oh, No, but it would go off. It would go off and it would be part of later on. It would be part of the future confirmation that somebody else somewhere else has performed the same experiment and attained the same results. So once you publish it as, as your side, then the peer review part would be to review that and perform the same thing, to com- and it would be part of the confirmation. Not okay. to the point where you've published your paper, because it's after you've published, but then peer review is, it shoots it down as well, doesn't it? As, as Tan's saying, somebody goes off and says, well, we did it exactly as you've described, and we got something completely different. You, you so, Say again, whoever that was in Discord. Becoming irritating, whoever is doing that, saying something and then not responding. Any evidence you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon? Well, a bunch of people peer-reviewed it, and they came up with... <laughs> Yeah. Well, according to according to um, somebody I know, I won't mention any names, but um, oh, refraction, and um, you know that means that something different's going on up there. You shouldn't jump to conclusions and think we know everything. Well, um, I shays. Apparently, ballers are telling me natural law is not evidence anymore. I'm getting a bit tired of Shay's ejaculations. Sorry, refraction. So how is that relevant to the subject we're talking about? Hello, do you have Tourette's? Time to kick somebody. Somebody Shay. Said yeah, what? you interjected, Shay. Did you want to add something to that? Last opportunity. I'm just going to remove you. All you're doing at the moment is interrupting a decent flow of conversation. Hello, sorry. Back. Hello. Hello? Hi. Yes, we hear you. Did you have something you wanted to add, Chief? Uh, May I just say, Nathan, you're very patient with these people. And when (laughs) when you get on them, it's because they're playing games like this. Yeah, Share you have a lot more patience than I'd have. After one time, it's like, it's, gone. It's 2020. Why don't people learn how to use a microphone, man? Or a mute button? Like, what's wrong with you guys? No, they know what they're doing. Because chocolate refraction. Sorry. That's okay. Did you want to elaborate on your interjection? No, I'll just listen. No, but you haven't been. You've been interjecting. That's why we're now talking to you. 
No, no, I have been listening. I think your points are very good. I, I, I won't interrupt anymore. Just carry on with your uh, debate. So you don't need to talk anymore is what you're saying? Yeah, no, I'll just listen. Okay, well, piss off to the live stream, you stupid dick. Don't sit in the Discord server interrupting us, you stupid moron. Get out. I'll just listen. That's what the live stream's for. That's what YouTube's for. <sighs> that concludes the housekeeping. That's more like it. Does he understand? Yeah. Sounded like yeah, housekeeping. Sir. So the newest arguments against me from the globe is, is natural law is not evidence. Oh. <laughs> uh, natural like, things that happen in nature is not evidence of what happens in nature. Okay. Well, yeah. it does go against their model completely, as their model is in complete violation of natural law. So, strictly, strictly speaking, that's true, because you can't present the descriptive nature of a natural law it's just a description of something that occurs always. The thing occurring always has a description, and that description is natural law. The thing being described, you could justify as evidence. But the actual law itself is just merely a description of something that occurs always. The thing itself is not the description, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so they're saying that you can't describe something the way it's happening. That, that's no longer an argument. <laughs> no, it's their way of ignoring entropy. Yeah, I second, don't know, man. second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply to the Earth, end quote, the rumpus. Roughly translated, the second law of thermodynamics does not work in the heliocentric model, which we don't live on. It's just a model and a philosophy. So therefore, it's not applicable to our model. But we don't live on their model. The Earth is not a sphere. Second law of thermodynamics absolutely applies to the Earth. We're standing on the Earth, and that's where nature and their laws have been described from. Go on, whoever that is. It wasn't wasn't the law discovered here on Earth, though? Just, I was thinking that it was, wasn't it? Yeah, by, by way of its suggestive name, it's a law that describes occurrences within nature. That would be our existence and how it is described so they have to deny that a hot cup of coffee left at room temperature will cool down so they're well, denying think, that that's the reality well when we've asked that, that is part of entropy when we've asked that question the response we got i can't remember who it was from was what if the cup of coffee was the size of an ocean that was the response we got. No no con concession that, yeah, cups of coffee get cold. That's just entropy increase. Fairly standard stuff. Hot flowing to cold, normal, just everyday stuff. But they won't even concede that because their model can't cope with this law of nature that's applicable always in the world we inhabit. I mean, I've been to the ocean. I felt it warm and I felt it cold. I guess it does apply, it sounds like. They wouldn't be laws. If they didn't apply, if those descriptions of what is occurring always weren't applicable, they wouldn't be laws anymore. They're at the stage where they have to deny <clears throat> things that happen all day, every day. Things that are absolutely necessary. We need the heat hot to go to cold. That has to happen. Otherwise, we'd die. There wouldn't be in us. So they're denying the very thing that allows us to exist. Hot has to go to cold. We couldn't. Otherwise, the, the place would heat up and the heat up and heat up. We never would have existed. Well, they risk, and they do it all the time, of looking and acting stupid on basic matters because they have to defend the model that's not natural and it's not real. So at all costs, they'll defend the heliocentric globe spinning model, even if it violates natural law. And then they look stupid doing it, but they seem to think, hey, I, I defended the globe. I defended the model, so <laughs> I'm right. 
whenever they start pulling the, the, the thing of this being like, it only applies to isolated systems, right? I go, the next question on my mouth is, is the universe an isolated system? And if they say yes or no, then I say, how do you validate that? First of all, how do you know that it's an isolated or closed system? Because you don't know that. Well, nobody knows that the universe is isolated or closed. They assume it. Nobody knows for certain. So if it doesn't, if it only applies to isolated systems, is the universe yeah. isolated? It, in their model, is it isolated? In their model, it's it's ever expanding. Um, Probably so, why. Would that make it to me? That wouldn't make it isolated, Nathan, because it's it's changing. It's yeah. not it's not a locked system. Um, second yeah, layer, yeah, it's I agree. A bit bigger. That's probably why. Do you get around that little problem by having it ever expanding? They've even got a reversal of that. The, the big crunch when the universe will start contracting. Yeah, the oh. elastic of the universe reaches its limit and starts coming back. Yeah, exactly. So then the universe entropy would be decreasing if that was to happen, right? That's correct. So yes, that's violent, correct. Something? That's absolutely spot on, Paul. Yes, a complete violation of the second law of thermodynamics in that description by Stephen Hawking, I believe, was the one who put that forward. I'm confused about something. How, how, do, how is the universe supposed to be expanding if they have a fixed volume to it? Well, the volume came from the... Uh, the start the start point so there was a fixed volume which then exploded out into everything we now know and that everything is just having the gaps between it increase according to them it's total uh, how, bollocks that's ridiculous <laughs> uh, how, 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 yeah. how, how did they validate this, this fixed volume if it was around before everything was they don't <laughs> that, that's our point or that's adam's point they don't they have an ever-expanding volume. Whenever I bring this up, QE says, no, well, I've got documented, they've got a number for it. It's like, yeah, but that, that, yeah. that isn't necessarily in line with their rhetoric, which is an ever-expanding, infinitely expanding universe, starting at a singular point and moving out, ever-expanding. That's what they've got. But the volume the is... It's just is... an arbitrary convention just to have a number to use in math. Yeah, that goes without saying. Uh, the fact that, they're, yeah, they can still, as QE cites arbitrarily assign a value to that yeah of course you can do anything you like within a model it's just really mathematical would... fantasists really we're dealing with isn't it let's be when it comes down to the brass tacks yeah it's just reification of maths yes spot on yeah uh, oh, yeah, I one, one more question the... uh, oh, sorry john I, I go after john go on john I was going to say, when they ask where the edge of the Earth is, uh, it's the same kind of question as what is your universe expanding into? You know, they won't answer that, but they demand that we tell them the boundaries of our world. Because they're looking for the little edge that boats are supposed to be going over. <laughs> right. <laughs> That physical geometric sphere edge horizon formerly known as Earth Curve. Did you have something to add, Brian? Yeah. I, it's a silly question, but at the same time, I think it's worth asking, considering I, I brought it up earlier. So when one of the boilers, let's say one of the well-known boilers, let's say Dan or Craig or someone, when they make a cup of coffee and they are distracted and have to do something and they come back and the coffee is cooled down, what is their description now for that, considering that they are the That didn't happen. <laughs> Coffee cock. Hold on. I don't think they would deny. I don't want to belittle these people. They're not that stupid. I don't think they'd outright deny that the second law of thermodynamics exists. Although, I suppose the initial starting point for this conversation was when they tell us that the second law of thermodynamics only applies to isolated systems. So, carry on, I'll shut up. So, yeah, maybe, maybe, the, maybe the coffee right. cooled down due to acceleration, according to some people. Oh, no, 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 no the, the coffee cup's an isolated system. Oh. 
<laughs> See, uh, they'll say that the coffee cup is accelerating, but they won't say that the, the coffee actually loses its heat. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, yeah. Well, nuts, this, this conversation started with uh, flat, with Flatside was mentioning that uh, they now are saying that natural law is not a uh, proof. Uh, uh, that they're denying it, basically. Um, that's where it started. So that means they have to, like, I, know what, I know what you're saying, Nathan, it might sound belittling for us to talk about them being that stupid, but they have to deny that that coffee is going to cool down if they're going to deny natural law in I any just way. Wanna, I want to distinguish between being caught in a contradiction and being stupid. So the other day, I can't remember who the super chatter was, I'm really sorry, but they were saying, words to the effect of, Simon Dan is more stupid than Sean Hawkins based on his being caught in a contradiction. Well, I disagree. No, Simon Dan is not as stupid as Sean Hawkins. He is still part of the pile, unfortunately for him. <laughs> Ugly goit. Nevertheless, these people aren't stupid. They're just caught in a contradiction, which leaves them looking stupid. Doesn't mean they are. They might yeah, say that I'll, about I'll... us all. You know, part of winning is knowing your enemy, knowing their limitations, knowing their capabilities. Well, partly the reason that they lose so badly when they come here is because they automatically assume we are stupid and they believe that. Now, I'm not going to underestimate these people in terms of just saying, oh, well, they're just stupid. No, when they're stuttering and stammering like Rumpus is, it's not because he's thick. It's because he's caught in a contradiction and cognitively can't work his way out of it on the spot when in debate. That's when you get the, it's in the, you know, it's swinging. That's when you get that kind of nonsense because they can't just say, yeah, Earth's turning under a pendulum. Because instantly, Earth's turning underneath stuff and then planes would have shortened flight times. So they've got to figure a way of getting around that cognitive problem. Well, the fact that they're even willing to attempt it shows at least some degree of intelligence. Mm. The rumpus has kind of let this one go, hasn't it? Mm. Sorry. Just, just think, that's what I was going to say. That on this particular one, the rumpus has kind of done that. We know he's not stupid enough to not understand the laws. Um, and in conversation he has let it slip i think it's soundbited it, it, the second law doesn't apply to the earth and that's him the only way other than stuttering and stammering that he can reconcile that contradiction he had eventually he's let that statement slip oh you, you know it's true but it doesn't apply to the earth is the only point he can end up going to other than obfuscation and distraction but I have heard him say that, I'm sure. Right, but, but that's really when he starts to stutter, you know, when he has to switch from just doing a, a story or trying to really explain his argument from just distracting. And then he, at some point, like trying to find the right angle and then figures out, oh, wait, no, this is not viable. <laughs> do, you, do, you think, do you think he doesn't know what he's doing when first he'll say, we do, we do have a geometric horizon? And then literally two seconds later, he'll say, we don't have a geometric, geometric horizon? Yeah, but that's he knows not what he's fair. doing. That's not fair. That's when they're in full baller delirium. So what do you mean that's not fair? <laughs> what is that? no, that's he's the already, point. He's already uh, on tilt when it happens. That's what you're describing. Full baller delirium is what I'm calling c cognitive dissonance. You can give it a whole number of names, but being in that position doesn't make you stupid. That's the point. No, do you remember? That, that's what remember? I'm saying. That he's not stupid. The the fact that I mean, obviously, it's not honest or anything like that. It's just you know baller tactics. But the fact that he's willing to say uh, both that we do have a geometric horizon and we don't in the same conversation, in the same context, that 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 shows that he he has an angle. He knows what he's doing. That's not being stupid. Being stupid would believe that would be believing that we both have a geometric horizon and we don't have a geometric horizon. That's stupid. No, Nathan is correct. I mean, I, I wasn't uh, when I was told, when I was asking uh, Nathan the question. Uh, it's not that I thought they were stupid, but I have to point out that if they are denying natural law as a proof against their model, then they have to by proxy be denying that a, a hot cup of coffee will cool down at room temperature. So that is not very, although they're not stupid, that is not a very smart position to hold, is it? Let's be honest. I, I think crazy. that's actually pretty telling, Did saying I, that we're going to deny natural I, law. So we're going to deny what actually happens in nature. 
Okay. Well, well, he that said, that he said means it, it, it's in contradiction to your model. That's why he's going to deny it. But he says it even oh. weirder because he doesn't deny it exists at all. He just says it doesn't apply to the Earth. And then my would question would be, okay, so how was it ever established then? In a pre-space I... age era, that makes no damn sense. Okay, guys, trying to let Ram, Rams get a word, and he was trying to get a word in there. Rams, did you want to add something? Feel free. Go ahead, or maybe you were just breaking up, trying to get through. I... Yeah, you're breaking up, Rams. That the laws happening. Am I? You're breaking up too much for us to make out what you're saying. I'm afraid, Rams. Sorry. Better. A little bit. Try again. If it stays, just re-log in with Discord. Yeah, drop and rejoin, maybe. Can I bring up a, a current uh, episode where we were talking about the pendulum, and Rumpus says, I know everything about pendulums. And then Nathan says, well, does it go back and forth, or and silence? Stammer, stutter. Stammer, stutter, stutter. And then he goes, well, uh, uh, it does a figure <laughs> eight. It does a figure eight. Oh, wow. And then at one point he said, I could look it up. <laughs> okay. Didn't we have ellipses first and then a figure eight? But we stuttered around. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely not backwards and forwards. Oh, that's just nuts. Can you go hear me now? Yes, we do, Rams. Go ahead. There you go. Oh. Yeah, I was just going to say, do, do they deny the law or do they think that it's become, being overcome by something else? They just flat out deny it. So it only applies to isolated systems and there are no isolated systems in nature. It's merely used as part of the description. Right. It's very weird because there's a, an example of a professor with a glass tube has you know the album between the two in the middle of it it's got a vacuum on one side gas in the other and very easily displays how gas disperses into the whole tube calling that entropy would be the second law of thermodynamics we, we saw it right there i don't understand how you would deny something like that i mean you prove it every time you open a can of coke the, the gas in the coke leaves the coke never comes back into the coke um i don't understand why people would deny such a thing exists oh because they have a model my bad because when the coke gas disappears they're forced to say the word they don't want to say it's flat <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, my Coke's flat, you mean. Nice contextually changing it. You can't recarbonate drink by the way. That it's holding the gas. Say again, Rams. One more time. They think gravity's holding the gases here. Actually, though. They think True. gravity's holding gas here. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I usually ask them, can, can, can gravity decrease entropy? And they have to answer that question. Let's see what they say. Sh show me with my Coke can. No, this is the answer. Just a quick shout out to James Richard, expressing his opinion about rumpus. Willingly being dishonest, rumpus in brackets, is stupidity. Sorry, that's just how I feel. Fair enough. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, James. Thank you very much for the super chat. And it's obvious that the coke needs to be in the container closed to have pressure. Yeah. One of those things, man. And then when I tell that to people, like my coworkers, they just look at me. Like I said something weird. And I'm like, but you understand this implicitly, right? Like, this, this is just the way it works. You know, you, you know damn well if you open your coke can. And you just leave it there. You're not going to come back in two days. And you're still going to be all bubbly and... And refreshing. <laughs> you know that's not going to happen. Oh, what the hell? Bubbly uh, and refreshing. <laughs> and refreshing. <laughs> I always thought it was very weird that carbonate, that the carbon dioxide is actually 
not in between the liquid, but literally dissolved in it. I always found that very weird how that actually works. Like in a closed Coke bottle, when it's transparent, you just right. you don't even see it there. It's anything in there. It's just like, no, that's just the yeah, state of just like black it's so liquid. weird. It's weird, but it's, it's, I don't know. I think it's like a really simple example of showing how the second law of thermodynamics works. Right. Well, so. this whole gas pressure will, yeah, eventually escape and then expand and cause some local pressure. If you put, if you open up a Coca can and you put a balloon on, on the lid, as it were, it will eventually, it won't really fill up or anything, but it will like stand up at least from the slight pressure that will come from it. Well, uh, I have to bring it, I have to bring it back to what I was saying about the cup of coffee. Cause let's just say, let's say Craig or Dan or Rumpus are, they're after making a cup of coffee in their kitchen and they're on their own and they put the coffee on the table and they get a phone call or whatever and then they come back and the coffee has cooled down like i know they're not going to do this but hypothetically speaking because of the, of what they're saying concerning entropy not being evidence against their model do they have to hypothetically believe that the coffee is not after cooling down because how do you get around that one how do you not you don't you don't but just to be nitpicky about your wording they're not denying the cause nobody knows the cause of entropy but the effect that would be the coffee cooling down described by the law of thermodynamics in that instance is what they'll deny they'll deny the effect Sorry to be nitpicky, but you're right. How do they get around it? Denying the effect when it's happening always around them, <laughs> merely described by the second law of thermodynamics. Well, it's sad, isn't it? They've got to deny the nature of their reality, and that's what this is all about. That's what the show is all about. People denying the nature of their reality in favour of reification of models and mathematics. And in that instance, it's the denial of a description of something that occurs always. Now, you're saying, well, does that mean that they deny something that applies to the world that we're living in and happens always well you'd think not but when it comes to actually debating about it yeah that's actually what happens right <laughs> not only will they deny yeah, it they'll yeah. try and avoid yeah. answering the question by asking us about coffee cups that are the size of oceans rather than just saying yeah coffee gets cold if you leave it on its own <laughs> and it's worse than that they don't just deny natural law they also make up their own like the law about gas spheres Oh, atmospheric law. That. Yeah, I get that in the chat comments a lot. People saying, well, atmosphere. And then they point to their sky vacuum belief. And you go, right, so you've got this description of air, atmo, sphere, your presuppositional fundamentalist religious zealot belief. And you're going to bundle these two words together and then have a load of definitions attached to it that get around entropy, an actual natural law. So a semantical wording of air as a sphere gets you around that, does it? So you assume air takes the shape of a sphere, atmo air, sphere, atmosphere. So air sphere. Well, you're just assuming air takes a sphere shape without containment in that so-called law, right? Well, it's not. Air takes the shape of its container. Gas takes the shape of its container. That's what gas does. It doesn't take the shape of a sphere, especially when your air sphere law has got a presupposition of a force that's not a force that you can think of as a force called gravity and homogeneous layers of air. That doesn't happen either. So the whole nonsense assertion that this word atmosphere, burying the word sphere in a description of air, not behaving how it does when you describe it in terms of what it actually does. It fills the volume, doesn't take the shape of a sphere. It fills whatever shape it's in. You also might need the sphere. Which... <laughs> yeah. He broke well, up back me. to the Coke can example. I think it's valid in spite of their objections. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, mix, with that. don't mix milk and Sprite, people. Don't recommend it. 
I like the puns. I'm a big fan. Ta. Yeah, I, I, I sorry, I had a point anyway. Have you ever seen that? What happened? It got instant yogurt. Really disgusting. But no one picked up on my pun, or they got it and didn't laugh. Bastards. I, I was trying. I didn't get it. Uh, maybe it's because it's a, an English thing. We say ta, meaning thank you. So if I say ta, ta very much, it means thank you very much. It's just shortened. Ta. Well, I said, I'm a big fan. Ta. Fanta? No? Oh, fuck you all. Fanta, yeah. The, the soda drink <laughs> oh, Fanta. God. Fanta, I, I, that's I, old. I did, I did open up my mic to sigh, Nathan. Uh, so I... <laughs> 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 he did, he did. Oh, I think. <laughs> to say. If Coke are listening, I am definitely up for sponsorship. <laughs> Chocolate already is. It's, so, it's mm, refreshing. It's... <laughs> what's, what's funny is I prefer Pepsi, but. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> I enjoy Coke. <laughs> I prefer cannabis. Oh God! I went out to lower the tone. The ball, the ballers come here to get crush. Oh <laughs> God! This is dire. This is as bad as when we did beer puns. <laughs> Just keep them light. Oh yep. God! Please don't. We've got to, Someone save us. <laughs> I like the beer that has lemon juice in them. Really nice. That's nice. You want to see Arwin? So, so, yeah, we, we could do the pun, the beer, the soda puns later. Just put it on my tab. Oh, <laughs> Antiquated Perfect. 80s cola jokes. Nice. I love it. <laughs> Can I just give you seven up and be okay? <laughs> Don't be a Fido Dido. Fido Dido. <laughs> I'm Dutch. I'll say it in a Dutch way. <laughs> I was like, you know, you know. <laughs> is that a brand of tortilla chips or what? Anybody under the age of 20 is not getting any of these. You realize that, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's all right, little, little young bucks. <laughs> They're not going to remember the days when there was Garfield stuck a, to the back windscreens of cars and a Fido Dido sticker on the tailgate. <laughs> Ooh, oh, yeah, 80s no, advertisements. Or that really guy special. that pulled down his pants when you squeezed a little thing in the front seat, you know, so you could moon people behind you. See more butts. See more butts. No, he's a pornographer. <laughs> but very telling, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell it's a Friday. Or Sunday if you're watching this and you're not a uh, channel member or watching live. Well, the ballers have been uh, tired out, crushed, the whole thing, and it's Friday. We can't even get one of them to come on to defend any part of their model. On a slightly different subject, YouTube actually recommended one of my videos yesterday for the first time what? in about two and a half years. I'm not even joking. What? Yep. Wow. Recommended it to you? No, no. Was recommended it, it to other people. Recommended it to me. Recommended it to other people for them to watch it. So I put out a video called Coriolis Virus Monkey Simon Dan. And that video in the space of 24 hours has had 5,000 views. And one of the commenters, or at least a couple of the commenters, said, <laughs> or be it in a derogatory tone, why is YouTube recommending this to me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, it was the outbreak monkey. That's what yeah. did it, man. You're, you're no, welcome. And, and the good message <laughs> afterward, because I, I guess that, yeah, the, the controllers are realizing that it, it's the lessons we have to teach about intellectual distancing is actually quite a valuable one. It's been and a massive joint to... effort. It's a, been a, a contribution from almost everyone on the panel in this regard. So Adam's done thumbnails and linked it to the COVID virus for humorous effect with the COVID virus thumbnails next to Coriolis virus descriptions of the symptoms they would suffer if contracting our oh, perfect timing if contracting the Coriolis virus so here's Adam's contribution Arwin sorry everyone else who might take offense to this had the best contribution bar none which was intellectual distancing 
which is just going to go down in history as far as I'm concerned. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, and, you know, Virus himself, that would be Achum Virus, who basically gave me the idea to put the words together in terms of Coriolis and Virus. They just appeared in the same sentence when coming up with a name for a video. And suddenly it was like, ah, the angels sang and <laughs> there it was. And, you know, everyone else in, along the way, Anthony Riley, a few other people have stuck their two pennyworth in. And uh, yeah, now we've, we've got this nice theme for Coriolis effect. It's gone from a convoluted double speak cluster screw of nonsense to a nice, coherent, simple pummeling for the globe side who undo their own claim every uh, undo undo their own claim every time they say we have no drift epic mm -hmm. and because yeah. of the vernacular we are you applying it, yeah this is gonna a lot of people are gonna get it immediately because this stuff is happening in the world so it's brilliant Check it out. James Richards, Hungry for Blood, from the chat. Any ballers out there want to join and provide scientific evidence of a ball earth? Please join. <laughs> it's baying for blood. It's like, I want to see someone tour a new one. <laughs> Thank you very much for the super chat, James Richards. I'm good, man. I'm quite happy when there's nobody here giving us grief. There are a few people I haven't taken off mute, though, so I should really do that. You know what? We, the flat out, is the globe's it is the real new normal. That's really the problem for the past five years. Well, for the past, since the 1800s, but in our time, past five years, we are the new normal for them. And that they are bracing against this new normal. Maybe. The new normal's a symptom, isn't it, that we've encountered with the Coriolis, where it's, it's well, you explain my paradigm then. Um, that's that's one of their. I think that came out yesterday. Well, how would you before. explain drift? How would you acquire fifteen degrees yeah. an hour? Etc. Uh, I think that started honestly with the black swan and them asking us why would we expect to see the geometric horizon. The only I way it, to I think really it's just like out. trickle down to other arguments. Because remember that now their new shit is to. To, uh, state that the way we describe their claims is sloppy <laughs> or or a straw man depending on which ball you're talking to right right yeah, the yeah. Only, the, if i may the only way to really get people that are infected with the coriolis virus out of them is by getting their mind off the non-inertial reference frame and then eventually they'll get out of it the problem i uh, observed on the show, when you try to help a baller with the Coriolis virus, is they actually drift away from the actual point. At 15 degrees an hour? <laughs> as Earth turns underneath? No, no, they just drift away. <laughs> they don't want to talk about it. No, they seem to think that they drift together when they've got Coriolis virus. Oh, that's the worst case, because then you lockstep with another virus. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Do, I think, do, oh, the I think I have, sorry, Nathan, I'll go after you. It, it was someone in Discord, actually. Go ahead, whoever that was. I was just saying, uh, to 10th man, do, you actually, do they actually drift? Yeah, do technically, they, that's no viral drift. Yeah, that's a good point. Do they actually drift, 10th man? Or is it not actual? Well, I'll, I'll quote one of their best. Science doesn't prove things. What, what mm. was that spurious oh. non sequitur? I... Well, I've got to act like one. I've got to act like one, don't I? Fair enough. You are being a baller. It's only reasonable that you should be able to. They, they, they actually drift, yes. All right. right. Coriolis is not actual deviation as you turn underneath stuff, oh. So that's a bit of a problem. Not, not Coriolis. The, these guys, when Tevin when said they drift away, they actually drift away. Oh, mentally, I see. With that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's live show possible. If you are watching on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley premiering streams, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Fortunately, if you are watching live, this is where we bid you farewell. Massive thanks to all of you who smashed the super chat 
joined as a member, commented, shared, subscribed, and all that good stuff. Oh, there's been one more super chat. Let's just shout out James Richard again. He says, to measure something, why would you expect to see it? <laughs> Meaning geometric horizon. Indeed. Thank you very much again for the super chat, James Richard. Stay tuned if you're watching on either Premier Ring stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hey guys, I would wonder I wonder what would happen if we would ask other flat earthers if they also put out videos with titles that would like say like Coriolis virus is spreading. I would wonder what would actually happen with YouTube because I think that maybe Nathan's video was recommended because virus is in the title and YouTube is kind <laughs> of like pushing that word in I general. I think the same thing, yeah. Yeah. I, I people also try Biden, Biden is the new president. Uh, Darren, hello. Darren, we're hearing you dying. Th Th don't thank die, you for Darren. sharing. That's not cool. Thank you for sharing. Don't touch your face. You're welcome. Wash your hands. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, Arwen. No, I was thinking that when I heard Nathan talking about it as well. You know, you could try all the all the latest things like uh, Biden is president, and you know all these kind of things, all the things that the media wants um, or so, favor. So are you, so are you saying the algorithm can be used in our favor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Biden is the new president, and Rumpus, you know, blah blah blah. <laughs> Fifty million views. Nightmare. That's only relevant if you actually have that as part of the context, because that's against the terms of service. So if you start clickbaiting and tagging stuff with stuff that isn't relevant, so if I was to tag this video up with Joe in the tags, then, well, technically it wouldn't be unfair, because I am actually talking about it right this second, but if I hadn't, <laughs> you know, then th that would be against YouTube's terms of service. They don't want you to be searching and finding something that's not related to the actual subject of the video. Yeah, but you could add in a little thing about Joe Biden at the end or something. Well, we just have. I mean, I could I could stick... I'm not going to, but I could stick it in the tags because if someone wants to, like, oh, well, I want to hear what they've said about Joe Biden and they're willing to scrub through the entire video to find it, they wouldn't be furious when they came to this little bit, would they? And therefore, it's justified it being in the tags. But you'd have to actually do that. Well, then if you do that, you're actually a Biden by the rules. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag where are the globe proof C's? Proof C's. <laughs> as, as far it's as I'm concerned though, it mattered not what I put in the tags or title. <laughs> Nothing I got uh, well at the point that they announced that they were gonna basically no longer recommend anything that's flat earth related. Prior to now from that point to this, rather, nothing I've had has been recommended to anybody. Now I can say, it seems, I could be wrong. It could be that those couple of people that have said that they've had it recommended just made that up. But it seems unlikely, as they're having a moan. Um, but there we go. You know, that that just is, to me, noteworthy. Not to mention the fact that it's had, you know, 
double the amount of views that one of my best videos would get within a day. So normally within a day, that a really good video that people like a lot and everyone shares around will get a couple of thousand or two and a half thousand views. So to get 5,000 views out of it is double what I'd normally get as a purely on the basis that it's been thrown out into people's feeds that may not be subscribed. Well, you could use the tag globe virus um, in your videos for a few days, see what happens. Yeah, Coriolis. You are speaking about... Coriolis virus. Why globe virus? Yeah. Coriolis virus is far more effective because it's an actual thing. We've made it a thing. It is now a thing. Coriolis virus is now a real thing. Why? Well, because we've authored it. No, you we... Yes. Go ahead, whoever that was. <laughs> or sit in oh, silence okay. after asking. <laughs> Was that Adam? No, no, no. Yeah, Adam, Adam knows how to use his microphone. I was thinking, why is Discord so painful today? I know. It has been. <laughs> that reminds me of D-A-T-R-H. <laughs> and now to Discord. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's got to come out with another episode, man. That, it, yeah, that I hope he great. does. He normally does them around <laughs> Christmas. So, you know, and it, when he's got the fake Discord server up, he's got like... 9 million people in there, and even when they're <laughs> totally crowded. <laughs> Any Globers got anything to say from Discord? <sighs> Alrighty then. Thanks for that, whoever that was. Good job you got my attention. So yeah, like I was saying, you know, we, we are the authority when it comes to the Coriolis virus. It is a real thing. You know, we can describe the symptoms of it. This isn't something we've just made up. We've authored it. We are the authority on this subject now. So Coriolis virus can be defined and described, and we are the ones to do it. Will it ever get to such an infectious point where we might uh, order some kind of curfew? We can't put those orders down. We advise intellectual distancing, which is about all we can do. I'm not going to threaten anybody Nathan. if they don't. Yes. <laughs> <Can't> do <it. laughs> we won't behave like the current authoritarianism that we're undergoing in terms of lockdown. We aren't in a position to do so. We can advise people that they should exercise intellectual Nathan. distancing. Yes. Can I help you? But people can choose I mean, to ignore really? us. They what can the choose not to intellectually to distance to themselves from these poisonous this people. Is, this is their new uh, trick. They come you up, guys say are one word. And then... This is your best group. <laughs> say again, Q. Seriously, ball, again. Ballers, 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 ballers. Seriously, this is what y'all got. You're going to just say, Nathan, Nathan. Uh, and then be quiet. This is your glow proof. This is what makes you guys uh, the shit. It's the new hotness. Yep, girls are lining up for you guys. Wow. We are the new normal. Yeah. I think we're experiencing the first no, of the Coriolis virus. <laughs> yeah. What are some of the symptoms of this virus, by the way? Nathan. Symptoms include self-contradiction, inability to formulate within scientific method, feeble attempts at distraction, hmm. Globe blasphemy or doctrinal denial of globe priests and new normal reversal. Doctrin doctrinal denial from their globe priests. That's a good one. That took some time. I know. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that took a little bit of trying. Uh, that had a couple of rewrites, that sentence. <laughs> the bit I'm a bit has... disappointed is nobody's noticed the FHS. It's not the NHS. Uh, no, I, I was. <laughs> I know. I, I was like, "What's that?" I that That's the <laughs> you see, he's even <laughs> in a future body. You can see, it's fully recognised, um, symptomatic review, and as thanks to thanks to Doctor Arwin, you know, we've got an approved treatment plan from the FHS. So, what is the FHS? It's the Flat Health Service. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, Adam, I just want to say it was brilliant for you to put the Globe Priest because it's uh, mass appeal to many. <laughs> mass appeal. <laughs> mass appeal. Boom, boom. Boom, <laughs> your <laughs> All right, yeah, that's good. You know, put put Arwin's treatment plan on the bottom. Maybe a little rewrite. If you if you have if you feel you have any of these symptoms, please initiate intellectual distancing immediately. Yeah, that definitely needs but, to be on but, there. It needs to be written down somewhere. No, but the, the illustration you have for feeble attempts at distraction that that's what the ballers are doing every time they talk to us. Right, but no, 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 but it doesn't. You, uh, intellectual distancing doesn't work if you have the Coriolis virus. You have to apply it when you spot somebody with the symptoms. I'll tell you what a symptom is. They just charged me sixty-five dollars to park for two hours. <laughs> it's outrageous. What the hell? That's, that's how much. Uh, it is. You live in New York. I was going to say that's New York prices. That's how much it costs in London. When I used to be a rep. So, and I have to reclaim my expenses. <laughs> oh, who is it that's doing that? Can anyone see who's flashing? Because I keep missing who it is. Uh, I'll check it out. By the way, you are Isn't constantly... Isn't that insanity, though? Hold on. Ryan? Nathan? Hold on. Keep on. Say again, Ryan? Nice. Oh, I was just saying I'll keep an eye on it. Ryan? Thank you. You're welcome. So, what about your London story? I was just saying, it, I'd often run dry on cash when I was a rep because of the astronomical costs of parking in London. So you go in please, and you come... Please help me. It's the... That was yeah. a faulty guy. Who? Globe virus foe? Salty JKT. That's the salty JKT. JKT? Salty JKT. Yeah, please on mute. Thank you. So yeah, he's on mute now. Salty JKT. Thank you very much, whoever that was. Okay, London. That's it. I'd um, run out of money because I'd have to pay so much for bloody parking. I'm just empathising with Neil based on the fact that he's had to pay about seventy dollars or whatever he said to to park for a couple of hours, which is what it's like yeah, in London. Yeah, but what, what pisses me off is my, the guy I'm working for gives me seventy dollars to park. I'm thinking I'm going to pocket something for myself. Nothing. <laughs> try, try, so, a, try a you, double parking ticket leave yeah. your car for literally 30 seconds come back to a 120 dollar ticket i just had to go through this whole ordeal just to bring tile into a federal building dog sniffing my car put your mask on cover your nose i was about to just say fuck you all and leave <laughs> all right back to london story at some point nathan's gonna finish this i finished it I think we finished it. Man. It was, it was a moot, fairly moot point about costing the same in London as he's moaning about. Totally unrelated to the subject uh, matter. At least it's the after show, I, I, and was, we've had endless interruptions I, I, like now. I thought there was going to be a crescendo. I'm sorry, I'm rubbing you. It, it was I a very important. Possibly point. bring this back to flat Earth for you, Nathan. Just yes, please. Just so when we was on the flat Earth tour, what we did find for parking was. Um, I think when we went to Milan, we got done by the undercover police and the traffic police. Uh, they were really nice, and we did hand them uh, flat earth leaflets, and they were, we were chatting with them for a while. And after he recommended a pizza place for us, the traffic cop, he did say to us, actually, you've been pretty smart today because you've been here all day. It would cost you double the fine um, in parking fees to have parked in uh, Milan all day So, and sent us on our way. So, yeah. Pulled Presum it back. Move on. Pres presumably they were only on to you because it was after Italy and by then you'd got the record and Interpol were on to you. Yeah. This is <laughs> oh, well, Interpol no, this was two days after I got rumbled in Rome. So Interpol um tried well detained us. <laughs> you say um, rumbled in, in Rome. In the, <laughs> yeah, you get rumbled in Rome. Rome. You're rumpusing yeah. his story. Go on, Adam. Yeah. We got done by Interpol that same day. Uh, we're in St. Mark's. They wouldn't let us put the, not St. Mark's, St. Stephen's, I think it is in Milan. And they wouldn't let us do out on the top. But So we went down into the tube station just underneath, setting up the signs, and literally got descended on by Interpol. 
um, and we were there. We we talked talked to them all about flat Earth, and they were quite interested after they checked our passports and that. But then when we went up, we got done again, like I said, by plain clothes and traffic police for because li literally we parked just li a hundred yards from from the square, just jacked the big flat Earth van up, and then. Uh, but like I said, the nice police officer said, yeah, it was better that way. It would cost you twice as much to park there all day. So, <laughs> so he's like, ah, oh, good on you. You got your fine. Yeah. But at least it was half the cost of parking in our exorbitantly expensive yeah. parking lots. <laughs> yeah. Excellent stuff. Well, that was wow, my, I was was that that my seat ad story. Well, it... Nathan. Yes. Nathan. Yes. That was Simon Skinner. <laughs> the the rumble in Rome. I like that. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, Nathan? Good day. Yes. Can I help you? It's Simon Skinner. The... Clearly not. There is no this help. Is, this is their new tactic since they found out they have no North Pole or South Pole, but Adam has Interpol. I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's actually a Coriolis virus <laughs> like that one. That's one of the symptoms, so that's symptom oh, number one. Remind us of symptom yeah. number one, Adam. That's self-contradiction. Oh, maybe not number one. The, the one with the toilet. Oh, feeble attempts at distraction, number three. Three, my bad. Yep. Chocolate's favourite. The yeah, funny bit is chocolate. All of those, they, that is just literally yeah. those local. Nathan, you friendly bitch. I'm like them. This one. But they fit quite I'm Adam well. Simon Skinner. Sorry about that, Adam. All right, dude. <laughs> they're funny, aren't they? Yeah. They're cute when they're that age. I wouldn't. I don't mind. It's It's the end of a very long week for me i'm not gonna lie so i'm quite a good mood given my past started today when i got in it i could have praised the lord i didn't but i could have done really it's been a bad week yeah i've been stranded in about five different places because when i changed the battery a year ago on the car i snapped off the little retaining clip and it's been rocking around loosening the clips and discharging the battery and after giving it a quick charge two or three times and still breaking down everywhere I finally gave it a 16 hour or whatever charge and started it from where it was last broke down, bought it home. And then today, having given it that 16 hour charge, I went in, pressed the button and it just started. I was like, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been yeah, a horrible yeah. week. So you, is that good now? You good? It's good. It's good. But every time I broke down, I'm like reaching despair because I've completely run out of money. I'm like everyone else at the moment. Everyone's really tight, which means I'm really poor because for obvious reasons, I'm going to get less support if everyone else is broke. So obviously it has a direct effect on me. So when you do break down, you go, shit, if this is a serious problem, i.e. one I can't fix with a screwdriver and a charger, <laughs> I've got no money to fix it. And this car's going to be stranded here picking up tickets in the middle of town or wherever I was stranded. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's five times this week? I don't know. That's probably an exaggeration. I can't remember. I'm not going to count off the places. It was... Well, no, don't make me. I but don't want to relive one, it. It's enough. It's enough. I don't want to relive the experience <laughs> that I've had this week with that with that car and its flat battery. It's a brand new battery. It's oh. my own stupid fault. I broke the thing that held it in place. But there we go. You broke the terminals, Nathan. You broke the you, terminals. What did you break again? The clip that holds the battery. So if you go over a speed bump... Obviously, if the, yeah. it's not held in place, it'll rattle or move around, and that untightens yeah. the terminals. Thank you, terminals. I see. Got it. Yep. I was wondering uh, what you were talking about, but yeah, I got you. All else fails, duct tape. Yeah, it worked on the OSS. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. If I could just duct tape it yeah, in place. Man. It's just, like it's not going to jump up and down. Stay where it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. Right, as long as it's not going to overheat, that should work. Shh, yeah, shut up, Arwen, you're ruining tape. everything. I got a funny story with duct tape. Oh no! This is listen, listen. This will be quick. We're on a construction. This is the family show, Neil. Hold on, this is an Italian about to tell us a story about duct tape. This could get exciting. We're on a site. 
And of course, the duct tape disappears. So everybody's sitting down for break, all tradesmen all over. So the, the duct foreman comes. He said, I have here a case of duct tape. This is now the fifth case. Now that everybody should have two rolls, can this one please stay here? Everybody just started <laughs> laughing. <laughs> duct tape just goes. It's there, people just grab it. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> Nathan, I'd, um, I'd go with cable ties, mate. Cable ties. Yeah, I've got them too. Yeah, I think you're right. Arwen's right. It would it, there's a chance it could cause a fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll zip tie the thing they down. I think. Fire retardant duct tape. I'll just well, zip tie it. <laughs> as on. long as you don't tie, uh, put the duct tape too close to the uh, the electric outs, you know, the ports. Then I think it should be all right. Duct tape can take a little heat, you know. It's just as long as it's not against uh, a radiator or anything too close to that. But I think batteries should not get that hot because they will explode if they do. So no, zip ties the best. I've been using them for a couple of years. zip ties. Yeah, I'm going to go with them. I think I've got plenty. I think you are the I think the heavy the duty the duct tape. ones. They use in construction. How, yeah, how big is the battery? How big is the battery? Yeah, normal car battery size. Car battery normal size. Car battery? Battery? How are you going to use club ties? Club put two or three through each other. You should put two or three just... through them. Nathan, just bring your webcam and show us. <laughs> yeah, you need to show us. <laughs> right, housing. Uh... Subscribe to Chris Fix, right? That's what you need. Not flat Earth debate, but fun though this is. It's Friday, so who cares? It's just kidding. Nathan, Nathan, yes. stick to the duct tape. The bill is smaller. Oh, geez. Oh my God, the bill is smaller. Well, why don't you fix the the battery carrier housing? Can't you do that? Yeah, I could. But that would require cash. That's what I've just explained. Every time I broke down, the stress was that I, if there was a major problem or I needed to be towed or I couldn't get it working with a screwdriver, then it would cost money, which I haven't got. So that's the, the main stress of the week, you know. <laughs> but there we go. So, yeah, I could do a whole number of things, like reorder the little clip that I've broken, but I just right. don't have the money to do it. I'm, I don't want to moan about that particular aspect, though, because everybody listening and watching to this is, is in the same boat. So it's unreasonable for me to moan about those things. Sure. Maybe you could uh, ask somebody with a good 3D printer to just cheaply print the case instead. Just get the design and print it out. I don't oh, know. yeah, because generally my mates are into 3D printing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I know somebody, but he's in New Zealand. <laughs> he's in New Zealand. The shipping alone. Yeah. I the guess. only person so I know that might be into now. that would be GeoShifter, the guy that got plugged on yesterday's show, along with Dean Wright and no, Dr. He lived John D. In Belgium. The Belgian guy, yeah. Did yeah, you, did... but no, I mean, uh, what's his name again? Uh, only Sheeple Can See. He was on my show a couple of times. He's He has a really serious 3D printer, and he is a professional at it too, so he does actually do business with it. But to him, it's really cheap to do that. So. Sure, sure. Is he a YouTuber? Uh, he has a YouTube account. I, he doesn't make videos. That's what as I meant. Far as I okay, do. no worries. I just I was about to moan and say, why aren't you doing what I'm doing then? If I've never heard of him, I want to be subscribed if you're watching this guy, but he's he's a commenter that has been a guest. I get it. Right. He's a baller. baller, right? Yeah, he is a kind of a baller. That is, I thought he was a flat earther first, but he's just like really stubbornly on the fence with that. Is he in Master B? No. No. Oh, uh, that's some, somebody else. Okay. Yeah, I think he might be in my Flat Earth early bird chat, though. Oh, Arwen, is that the guy that offered to do the Arwen doll range? Yes. <laughs> Arwen doll range? Yeah. Oh, yeah. we could bypass this. This sounds crazy. I, I, I declined. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think there's, no, uh, no there's a market for people who want an Arwen voodoo doll. Uh, yeah, great. Simon Dan could have it on his shelf next to Nathan's bust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get a little outbreak monkey. <laughs> just before we go off the subject, though, because... Outbreak monkey marblehead. 
<laughs> just before we move well, off this subject. He does print signs. So you could order him to make a, a Coriolis virus sign that looks really professional. You could do that. It's just one word on a badge, infected. Or that. In infected vector. Just going to ask you in the <laughs> Discord server, because Dean Wright and Dr. John D both coincidentally turn off their comments on all videos <laughs> so i can't really gauge if anybody's actually gone and subscribed to them did first and foremost the guys on the g plus panel did you all go and subscribe to dean wright i did no however i get a boatload of subscribers from you thank you i wanted to thank you for that thank you very much what's a boatload i would say 30 is somewhere that in that, 25 30 somewhere around there 30 is that it Yes. Oh. Is that bad? Well, well, I mean, Dilly Gill picked up about 250. What the That's hell? I got your overlap, is it? Because nobody knew him. Everybody knows you, John. Oh. Because you're so freaking oh. loud. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what you're saying is you picked up about as many subscribers as Burn Fat Till My Stomach is as flat as the earth. I picked up, yeah, it was about that. Left, I'd say in between 20 and 30. I didn't count them specifically, but just ballparking it. Fair enough. Yeah, it ranges from 30 to 250, or now 25 to 250. So there's obviously a big range <laughs> of what people will actually go and subscribe to based on my recommendations, but at least I know. Uh, it might be lower than that because as soon as they join, they, uh, I, they, it, I'd seen some, some uh, subtraction from, so well, they, they weren't impressed. Will you typify the reason why? No offence. Well, every bit of offence, actually. <laughs> so you didn't subscribe to <laughs> Dean Wright. Say again? You didn't subscribe to Dean Wright. Oh, that was uh, that was anticipor anticip anticipatory penance. Yeah, you got it. That's you're very you're good with language. I love it. Yeah, that was really good. I, I thought of it immediately. That I, I seen where you were going with that because I didn't do it. Right. But that's but it's hard to keep your... Okay, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm done. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say that's 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 the thing, isn't it, right? So if you hear somebody shout someone out and you go, Yeah, oh yeah, that sounds good, and you just watch the video for the entertainment video value rather than actually going and subscribing, then people won't be subscribing and that's when you end up with people just gathering up 25 subscribers and you're like hmm there was more than that watching the live show there's a fair chance that a lot of them are already subscribed to you but with someone like burn fat you go mm, no i don't think you're dean right and i can't gauge it because his comments are turned off but you know oh. so the whole point of this is to establish is it being are people lost interest in my recommendations at this point in which case i'll, I'll give it a rest for a few weeks Right, that was a really good. Where'd you get that idea from? Um, truthfully, I want people to shout me out. So I did a, a video called "Twerking for Subs," and it's like, well, I can't really put that out there and then not abide by my own sense of logic and do it myself. So it's like, well, I'm saying to people, the only way I grow statistically is when I get shouted out. So therefore, presumably, everyone else who's in the same community as is in the same boat. Well, what can I do proactively for me? Nothing. What can I do proactively for everyone else who's in my community? Well, I can do a lot. So I have. It was mighty white of you to do that, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, when I sub <laughs> mighty white of you. <laughs> by the way, when I subbed to Dean White, he immediately gave a comment to one of my videos, thanking me for subbing. So he has definitely taken notice what you've done, Nathan. Oh, good. Uh, it's not that I want him to notice. I just, it's, that sounds bad. I just want to gauge whether or not it's successful. And I think based on, you know, what what I'm seeing, it should be the case that I give it a rest for a while. I, I don't think, it's not that people, they just get sick of the same thing, right? If I keep doing shout out videos, it's like, oh, it's just another shout out video. Because if I give it a rest yeah, for a Nathan, few weeks. Nathan, people will stop listening if you do the same thing over and over again, like talking <laughs> about Coriolis virus for three months straight. Yeah, that's a, that's a logical train of thought. Oh right, says you. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not. I'll oh, no, I'm not going to roll over and take that. Says you. Six straight months with Anthony on Gravity. <laughs> Got him. No, you don't get my what I'm saying. I'm saying like this is ridiculous to say that people get bored of it just because you're repeating it. Because 
everybody likes this show so far. A lot of people, you get big shout outs and you definitely repeat yourself. No, no, I, I agree. But I'm saying enjoying something for entertainment value on a repetitive nature is a definite, you know, that, that occurs. People like um, what's the routine. So no, that's not a bad thing. But what I'm saying is I can't build a routine of people going, clicking a link and subscribing to people I recommend. That is something that I can't build a routine in. So I'm going to have to keep, each time I do it, for it to be successful, it's got to be semi-fresh each time. In other words, it's not going to become a regular thing and I'll give it, I'll knock it on the head for a couple of weeks at least and then I'll do it again. Right. Well, Nathan, yeah, you've you done make this it before. More special I don't know if way. you remember, but years ago you also did this. We had many periods when people were doing this sort of thing. Remember? Yeah, yeah I remember. And it, 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 it kind of stopped. Exactly. There were, there was, I, I cast my mind back and thought of all the times everyone was shouting everyone out. And that kind of came to a halt. There was a lot of infighting in between, though. Let's not forget. <laughs> well, it, it comes and goes, you know. Uh, people just build up like the need to find good people out there, get something fresh. And then eventually you've got enough fresh stuff and then, yeah, you're done with that. So it's like the, the uh, what do you call it again? The branding of the, the sea you, you comes remember, up. Now. You remember when Sleeping Warrior did something like that? He had like, when he was doing his shows, he had like a screen. He had all the guys that he would recommend and subscribe displayed on the, on the screen. Yeah. yeah, I dogged him out. He didn't have my channel on there. What a punk. Anthony. <laughs> Speaking of which, that was a really punk move, by the way. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm hey. with you on that, John. I had to call him out on numerous occasions for not putting Arm Realm Media up there. I kept going, Oi! Yeah. Oi! Not me. Yeah. <laughs> Oi! Oi! <laughs> the no hey, good deed goes unpunished. If you shout out your fellow flat earthers, what you'll get from the people you don't shout out is vitriol and offense being taken you can't win i just want to know why arwin was held down on the subject of gravity for six months why he was held down held because down. of my <laughs> lack of understanding of the scientific method i was, was scientifically liberal minded at the time held down arwin pun held down there density was, that, was a, that was a joke oh wait <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, just a uh, shop talk, a couple seconds shop talk, because I know you love it. Nathan, your mute button in this in Google Hangouts keeps on flashing on and off. What's up yeah. with that? I have no idea. Sometimes it does that for me on other people's lines. It's just a glitch within uh, G+. Within G+. All right, yeah. carry on. That's probably why they couldn't hear you say it makes it more special, John. So... It for some reason, Discord's not getting through. If I'm not getting through to the G+, no, as no, no, no. Nathan, that Nathan, that's not true. I just went to Discord and checked out, and everyone and everything got through perfectly. So there's no connection problem. No, the other way around, from Discord to you. So often you'll, a moment ago, you spoke through, not you personally, someone on Discord, uh, someone on G+, spoke through John. So John said, yeah, it makes it more special, but none of you heard him because it, the, whatever glitch that's causing isn't allowing them to be heard by you. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. I heard him. Well, that makes all the difference. <laughs> uh, let's, let's talk about this technical issue for the next 10 minutes. All right. Well, I oh, think we no. can see oh, it. Oh, he's dead serious, too. <laughs> oh. Yo, what up, Eli? Hey, Good morning, guys. That's good. Uh, <laughs> Chocolate chicken DMs. Hi, uh, Redman. What's good? What was with the uh, feeble attempts at distraction from the Discord server during the live show, do you think? Coriolis. Because they're on the ball. Just numpty hecklers. Ball is lost. Maybe more, maybe more bored prank callers, like yesterday. Say again, Dank? Yeah, we heard that. <laughs> it's a terrible line. Say that again, Dank. Maybe he just joined with his mic open, that was all, and we could hear his TV or something. Hey, that's my well, observation of that. Uh, in the face. In the Go on, Red Band. I said uh, the other day when I came in, and I showed you that observation, 
I got it. The, I got it today at seven forty-five in the morning, and you can see the difference. Of how much you can see uh, on a day-to-day basis. Who's this? Is that Redman? Redman, your mic's on. Yeah. Yeah, he was telling us about the observation that we presented the other day. Then I asked him if he'd go and get it back in a nicer aspect, and he was good enough to do it. Oh, I didn't hear the beginning of that. He was cut off. Yeah, I'm having to close but, your guy's line when someone in Discord talks because otherwise they're just not going to oh. get heard. Sorry. That's all right. But chocolate, chocolate has the new uh, observation for the day, and it just looks totally different. Uh, I just put it in Master B if you want to play it, Nathan. Yeah, yeah, I'll stick it on. Just give me a couple of seconds if you can talk amongst yourselves. And I need a link okay. to Master B so I can post it for you next time. So going back to creating content, hopefully I'm working on some music. Should be getting a new microphone today. So maybe I'll have some more uh, actual content on my channel. I got your pun rap going. Cool. Excellent. Can't wait. I can start shouting you out properly then, Chocolate. So the, the video didn't come f on Master B. Was it? Was it in Ballbusters by chance? No. Oh, my. So I did get a video from Flat Story. Oh, oh, there we go. Chocolate. Uh, chocolate, you're not on mute. Talking to me. That's why. <clears throat> yeah, it didn't go through yet. No, I've got it. I've got it. It's up. It's up. Red man, your video's up. I know you can't see it. No, it's all good. Uh, my, my main thing was, you know, just taking the observation, you know, over, you know, every time I go to the building, you get to see something different. Like on cer uh, certain days, you you can see it clear. Other days, you're just not going to see it so clear. If you look at the mountain in the background, you can just see how the sun is coming up. It's at a different spot on, on this observation that it looks like a fog is, you know, over the mountain towards the end of the video which is uh, Stone Mountain. Almost like a black swan, you'll see different things at different days at the same location. Right. You know, it's great. I, I can see that mountain from my job. <laughs> That's how close I am to that <laughs> Is that so? Yep. That's annoying. Your camera, your camera <laughs> yeah. phone decided right that it wanted to focus on the glass. So it's focusing on all the dirt <laughs> rather than the... Uh... <laughs> Sorry. No, it's not your fault. I'm just, I'm just one of those foibles with a camera phone, and it? There's not a lot you can do about it. Yeah. Well, one thing that, that kind of uh, tripped me out, you know that we all, majority of the time, we all walk, walk amongst the ground and look at things. But when you look out the look out at the window, it almost looks like a green screen. If you're walking over to it, if you look at the video closely, it just look it looks weird being up so high. Just to see if I can resize it a little bit. I'm going to play it through again from the start and uh, okay, nicer. There we go. It's almost like when you're walking towards the window and everything everything in the background almost looks like it's like moving. But it's it's weird how it looks to me. That's awesome that you get to go that high, you know, pretty frequently. <laughs> that that's pretty cool. Three times a week. That's what's up. <sighs> Always a war zone here. So did any of you guys in the G Plus panel actually click on the link that to Chocolate shared? So you can see what I'm presenting to the audience right now. Yeah, I'm watching. Uh, I, I did, I'm watching. Like, that's right on, on right y'all. Wave high. <laughs> <laughs> later on, if you want pictures, I can give you the pictures later. I take pictures up there all the time. Oh, yeah. Stills are good, too. Obviously, you can take your time, but you can pull out oh, good yeah. stills if the video is of a high enough resolution. Typically, if I want pictures of my kids, I'll film them and then try and pull out pull out one of the stills where they're actually smiling rather than trying to catch it. But like with this, 
Well, I will say, like like you were trying to, you, you're detailing it while you can't see your own video playing. But yeah, it depends on the day, right? Depends on the conditions. The horizon isn't a physical geometric sphere edge. It's moving depending on the me. clarity. Say again, Neil. I said, are you cleaning me? Cleaning me. <laughs> it's not? I always thought it was. Nah. What city is that? Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia. where chocolate is. The ATL. That, that's where I am, right? That's that's where the. Can yeah, I? Ask like I said, oh, like I can see that mountain from my from a certain street close to my job. Like I can look out and see that mountain that close. I love the my movie in the corner. <laughs> I moved it out of the way. <laughs> that's seriously cool, Sorry. man. That's so, that's crazy. Yeah, but how much of that mountain is is not in sight because of Earth curve? How oh, much is missing? Seems to take it off screen. You're <laughs> all discussing it. <laughs> Let's get it back on screen. How about that giant mast pointing up there? That thing's gonna have some reach. What? Well, that mountain from where I'm at is 14 miles away. But if you look down at the bottom of the mountain, look at the front of the mountain, and then just look on the edges of it, and it's still it's still going backwards as far as the horizon, apparent horizon. Yeah, very cool footage. So I saw some other mountains. Earlier in the like to the left, you know what mountains those were? Further back though, definitely uh, further got, back. But yeah, I got to see if those are the Blue Ridge Mountains. Shenandoah River. <laughs> you don't get it. No, no, Take go ahead. Me is old, eh, older than the sea. That's it. You got it. Go, let's do it. <laughs> Country road, take me take home to the place. To a place. West Virginia. <laughs> my my mom's the effing button. Take, take me home. home. Country road. <laughs> oh, I just want to let everyone know I was out there in the kitchen. I do have a breakfast sandwich waiting for me when I get out there. But anyway, my son's doing his homework. He is a freshman in high school. And the question was, what is the sixth step of the scientific method? Sixth step. That's right. What got- is the sixth step of the scientific? No, notice it said scientific method, not methods. It depends. Please. Is it QE's method? Hold on, or- hold on, hold on. Let's have a go. So if you've got observed natural phenomenon and then formulate hypothesis, but then, but then you broke that down. Yeah. I'll, I'll go on. You nope. said no already. No. Nope. Yeah. Remember, there's seven steps. Okay. So, so you got observed natural phenomena. You got literature review. You got hypothesis construction. You have experiment. You have analyze, validate hypothesis. But those two steps can be uh, separated. So validate hypoth- hypothesis. Uh, analyze results and report results. Okay, so the reporting bit at the end. We discussed this earlier, coincidentally, and I was like, well, is that really necessary when you're talking about intermin- intermingling peer review with systematic experimentation? Well, it's not. It's after the fact. It's a further step. It's just every time I give it, I give the condensed version. Yes. Yeah, peer review number two, report results. Result. That ends the scientific method, peer review. People don't even know what peer review is. Well, man. John, we, we were, I was probably, I don't know, you can probably clarify what I said earlier then. I, I was saying it's, I don't think it's formally part of it, but it, it's part of the validation that gives it extra validity after you've done it enough to make a statement. But in the old days, it used to be repeating the experiment to go away and redo it to say, yes, it does work, not just reviewing the paper. Huh? Huh? 
<laughs> I didn't. Do you want me to? He's saying he's saying that they would. Like? <laughs> he's saying that they would duplicate the experiment to validate it. Who who would do that? We're talking about just the scientific method. The peer well, reviewers, right? Yeah. Well, if the no, peer, peer reviewers review. don't agree. Oh my then. God! Let's have you go ahead. Educate us on it. Sorry. Jeez, oh man, dude. It's not. That's not peer review. What is? What is peer review? Are you asking all of us? Yes. It's a. Uh, it's um to do with scientific journals. It's um, okay. um uh, someone's hypothesis uh, concerning whatever uh, is reviewed oh, by others. You should stop. You should have stopped while you were ahead. So, what does scientific journals or institutions have to do with the scientific method? Nothing. But Adam Nothing. was postulating or su suggesting that part of the systematic experimentation stage would be tied up in peer review in an ideal world. I.e., once you've validated your hypothesis. You then send it off to quote unquote peer review, and they would repeat the experimentation to validate that you have actually done it correctly. And no, that, that never happened. That's it, that that's nonsensical. That's not peer review. That's what I said, Adam. Yeah, well, that that's not my. Yeah. I always yeah, Adam. Um, I did. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> my understanding back in the day, not so much now, and that's not what happens now. We we read papers now. Certainly, when I was taught these basics, part of the re re peer review process will be to repeat the experiment initially. Not no, that, now, no, no, but no, 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 no. In fact, that's colloquially what the ballers think and what oh. Evo Tards think. Hey, that was a bit blow, though. There was no need for that. <laughs> no, <it was> <laughs> no, <not> you. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was then never I stand corrected, gents. I stand, uh, but that, that was genuinely, I've always thought that that was part of the process that you, not ne it wasn't necessary, but when you're peer reviewing, for you to peer review it, you give an extra validity to say, yeah, I've gone away, I've followed your methodology, your apparatus, and I've achieved the same results. Adam, don't give up so I'm, quickly. I'm, Ask for I'm a kinda, citation. I'm kind of <laughs> with that, though. Like, I understand it, because if, all right, so somebody does a scientific experiment, They've got the whole scientific method laid out. Okay, great. They validated their hypothesis. Great. Okay, so now you're going to review it. So what are you doing? You're, you're reading what they've done? Yeah. So what? You're reading a story about something. So is it really reviewed until you actually go and validate that experiment yourself? Like, I, I, I understand where Adam's coming from. Like, I would think an actual peer review would be someone actually repeating the experiment that's being Never. reviewed. But that's Never. not the well, look at the word. <laughs> just look at, hold on, guys. So, just, so reading but, stories, great. No, no. Listen to the I'm word. Guessing, I'm guessing the, that uh, the the peer review is it's it's not part of the method because the method has to do with the experiment, and then sometime after someone repeats it again, so it's not included in the method itself. No, no, it's it's, right. it's mixing up the word peer review, review, with the reporting stage in the method, which it isn't. So, but the, it's the clue is in the word itself, review. So they're looking at it again. Well, looking at it again isn't performing systematic experimentation. Right. So we're reading a story. Great. It's a category error, right? It's just a category error. Don't get all huffy and puffy about it. It's it's just simple. It's. It's outside the scientific method when you report results. Well, you may be report who it, reporting them to who, right? Well, it's not really that that clear, but still, it stops right there, right? As soon as you report, hey, got an experiment, it ends, right? Scientific method ends right there. And with that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you first and foremost to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of you in either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley primary streams for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video.